What's up guys? I hope you're all doing well. When it comes to working on power lines, we pretty much all know now that most tasks can be performed while everything's still energized. Even replacing an entire pole, you can use a kite, you can float the phases, rubber things up. There's a ton of different ways that absolutely everything on that pole can be replaced without even shutting off the power. But when it comes to replacing miles of high voltage lines, things can get a little bit tricky. It still can be done energized. You can build a bypass, parallel the high voltage lines, but oftentimes you're much better off just having an interruption. So what we do in that case is prepare as much as we can, bring in a ton of crews and have a short interruption while things get changed over. So today I wanted to show you guys this job that I drove by in my area where there's a crew from out of town that's been prepping things over the last few weeks. And it's really quite interesting. Oftentimes you can run in the new high voltage lines down below the telephone, take a quick interruption, transfer them up onto the cross arms and away you go. But this job didn't only involve reconductoring, but also replacing all the poles. So let's take a look at the setup. All right, so the first thing before the crew ever even got started, a pole crew come by and set all these new poles. Now this particular job was a little bit easier because you can see all the old poles are actually leaning towards the road. That's just because we're on a big open marsh, lots of wind. The ground is fairly saturated here. So the new poles were all set. They are five feet taller than the old poles. Now each pole also has these orange guards. You have to have those orange guards in place as you bring the pole up in close to those live wires, which are 7,200 volts phase to ground. That would be approximately 12,470 phase to phase. Also, you'll notice our ground wire. It's coiled around the butt of the pole and left only a few feet up, as opposed to, you can see the old system where it's bonded onto the neutral. You don't want that ground wire running very high up the pole as it's set into those live phases. There's also times in which the old poles are intentionally leaned out of the way as they prepare to run a new line. All right, so before we go over the next step, Let's first get a little better idea of what we're looking at here. This is a three phase system. It's not two circuits. We have the old set of wires and the new set. The old set of wires is two watt ACSR. New set is 336. So if you take a look at this old pole in front of me, the two leftmost wires, let's see if I can get down in here without getting wet. So the two leftmost wires on your screen are both energized 7200 volts. That's the road phase and center phase, A and B phase. And our C phase is on the far right of the screen up on that auxiliary arm. So these two wires on the left, they didn't touch at all. That road phase, they put an auxiliary arm up on top of that new structure and actually lifted the phase while it was energized up and over out of the way. That way it gave themselves some spacing as they ran in the new lines. When crews are rubber gloving primary lines, rubber gloving meaning using class two, for example, 20 kV rubber gloves, and actually grabbing a hold of the primary lines, we must first shut off any reclosing devices that are on the lines. Now what a reclosing device does is, let's say a branch lands across the three phase, there's a quick spike in current, the reclosing device will trip out, just like a breaker, but depending on the settings, will automatically turn back on restoring power in hopes that the fault has automatically cleared. If the fault is too high, or if it repeats itself two or three times, the reclosing device will then lock out and power will not turn back on. So when working directly on the lines with rubber gloves or with sticks, transferring wires, or sometimes even just within close proximity of the primary lines, the last thing you want is for that reclosing device to close back in in the event of an accident. Most times reclosing devices are at the substation and then every so many hundred spans as we go out on the line. So the first thing the crews are gonna do each morning is flip the little switch that removes the reclosing capabilities of this device. That device is then tagged both in the field and on the system with our dispatch. Little side note here guys, depending on where you work in the world which company, these procedures will vary. 
Now, regardless of spacing, running in new wire, hundreds of meters of conductive wire, only feet away from 7,200 volt energized primary, it's not a task that you want to take lightly. So what they do is they run that wire in while it's under full tension. They actually mount reels of wire onto the pole that have a break, a braking system onto the reel of wire. They will then pull that non-conductive rope from pole to pole through all the pulleys until this entire portion of the system is basically strung with rope instead of power lines. Once that rope is all in place at full tension, you hook it onto the reel of ACSR or all aluminum 336 in this case and pull it back along through under full tension. This entire process will of course be performed while the reclosing device is set into the hold off non-reclosing position. It will also be performed quite slowly and methodically along with a spotter that follows along with the attachment point between the rope and the wire as it passes through each and every pulley just in case it gets jammed up. What we're looking at right here are some extra guards that were put in place as the wires come down off the pulley to this structure in front of me where the wire was temporarily dead-ended. It will be mounted up into place on the cross arm during the interruption. Sometimes those insulated guards are used at other poles where there could be a transformer overhead guy wires, pretty much anything that starts getting a little bit too close to that wire that's getting pulled in. Another note, during the entire pull, that wire is also grounded. You can see here where it's temporarily dead-ended on the structure, which will be transferred up onto the cross arm during the interruption. There are a set of construction grounds on the wire, but during the pull, there is actually a traveling ground. It's basically a couple pulleys on a spring system that keeps constant pressure against that wire, which also has a grounding bale as the wire is being pulled in. The individual running the tension machine and on the wire trailer is also bonded to ground, which is bonded to the grounding mat, which is bonded to the trailer, which is bonded to the wire. Basically in the event of an accident, everything is at equal potential. This structure here, could be transferred while energized. It's a lot of work, but it could be done. Where there's an interruption that's gonna occur anyways, we might as well have a crew dedicated to this structure and complete that at that time. So last but not least guys, now that everything is in place, we will schedule an interruption to change everything over and it will not take long at all. There will probably be a dozen crews in the area, maybe three or four poles assigned to each crew. We'll have traffic control, the entire area, the entire two, three miles, whatever it is, will become our work site. And the crews, the crews will be staggered apart. There are three or four poles, power will be shut off, grounds installed. Now, here's one important thing to mention, grounds installed. The grounds that are installed will be trip grounds. They will be installed every approximately six span at the source, at the end of the job, and every six span in between. However, as the crews are working on their structure, they will look after their own equal potential bonding. The interruption shouldn't last more than a few hours, at which point all of the three phase lines will be permanently tied into the new structure. The old stuff cut down, the old stuff cut down, we'll have some groundmen working on the ground coiling that stuff up. The old poles will also be stripped down at least a few feet, just to get them away from the live stuff for easy removal. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today. It is December 20th. It's getting awfully close to Christmas, so I wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy whatever, just be happy, guys. I really appreciate you guys, all the viewers, the support, the feedback, the interactions. It's been really great. So again, hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you soon.